there's only one it, it gets lonely and there's only one way somebody gets that spot because there's no retirement plan so that means that eventually the guy that wants that spot below you so that means everybody below you is politicking against you the whole time trying to build a crew they want your spot and there's only one way they're going to get it Welcome to this episode of Chat with Stacks. I'm your host, Bill Stacks, and today I got Ronnie Harrell. So they're just looking for the next guy they want to get. You know, I had this Indian star. We got the plane, we're on the bus, we're heading to a joint. I forget which joint it was, in the back. But he tells me, uh, yeah, I'm not staying out here. So he's got a knife with him. And he gets to his cell, he drops his stuff, tells the dude in the bottom bunk, get up, I'm taking that bunk. Dude goes, no, you're not taking that bunk. So he kills him, throws the dude's stuff off the bunk, makes the bunk, lays down in it until they come and get him. And uh, back to ADX, and he's a happy camper. And that guy, yeah, I guess he's happy too. He's done. And he dealings with Michael Thompson. Mike Thompson. Uh, Mike Thompson, um, he's, he's an old guard a while back. And... Uh, he thinks he could get on TV and say things because they kind of were were not really trying to look under rocks for him and stuff, right? And uh, one of the few they weren't interested really in, in in getting like that. But he wants to get on TV and say a lot of things that ain't already out there. Everything I've told you is already out there. You know, there it's nothing the feds don't know. It's nothing these gang units don't know. Uh, they know quite a bit. But he wanted to get up there and say things that nobody was supposed to know. Inside, and that changed. Yeah, that changed everything for him. He probably wishes he would have never done that. You know. Um, I know that after the Gotti thing, they picked Gotti's brain on how the uh, how he structured everything, and then they had a restructuring in the brand and the feds. They set up a commission, committee members, and all of that. They structured it the same way, and that was all Barry. That was all his get down. He was real interested in how that was set up and and they restructured it. And the commission ran everything, a three guy vote. Then you had committee members that one each joint had one that ran the brand and everybody in the in the joint. Now California was in a unique position at one point to go to Victorville, the penitentiary. They sent two guys down to unite all the nation's gangs. And those two guys got down there and Mark and Terry and got a little drunk with it all drunk with power. And he started getting urine bottle tests from squad and running in people's cells that they had on restriction, telling them here's pissing that looking at the side, Oh, you're dirty, having them fucked up and sent to the hole. So eventually, uh, so a couple of the gangs that they were supposed to unite with got together and rushed them. But at that point, when they rushed Mark and Terry, a whole group of Nazi lowriders were there and they jumped up and saved them. And uh, I happened to be in another joint at the time and was the only one on the yard. And uh, a couple of those gangs got word before I did. So they got theirs first. <laughs> oh, it's just the way it is. You know what I mean? So what happens? How, how do they approach you when something like this happens? They get word. You have no clue what's going With on. With knives. But you're on yeah. point, right? I'm on point all the time with knives. And I did not get stabbed that day because they, they drank and all of that. They wanted to go to the whole drunk. And so they were so freaking drunk that uh, even though they had knives, I was good. <laughs> I came out on top on that one. Now, when they and come drunk. at you, you're able to fight back, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And fight back. And if the cops see it right away, they're rushing. Boom. And it's you're, you're pretty much good. You know, that was my luck of the draw that day. They sent three, and I just took off right when I seen them coming. So, and then it got seen quick. So that kind of rescued me. And then you get transferred. They transfer the guy that gets attacked because it's either three on the plane or one. So one's hitting Connor and leaving. That was me that day. If I would have got it first, got word first, I would have got a piece, and I would have went sober and got one of them. I had a left yard being the one, and 
that would have been that. More but on point, you're able to focus on what yeah, you do. Yeah, you got to stay focused and your head on a swivel. Another hit I seen was a guy in a handball court. Now, you know them big, thick zip ties? Yeah. They got a hold of one of those. And in the end, they put a hole, they put a little key on it, and they got it behind that guy, put it on his neck, and pulled it all the way tight and walked away. And he's just on the handball court moonwalking until he drops. And you can't get that off. No, you're done. You are done. Yeah. And, and you know, you don't get to sit around and, oh, that's fucked up and all that. No, 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 no. You just leave, shut your mouth, shut your eyes, eat your mush and hush, be glad it wasn't you. Walk me through what are some of the things that would get you hit with the, with the brand? Anything. There could be something as simple as you get a wrong word on a dude, right? and you make the mistake and have that dude hit, you're done. It's coming back on you. You don't get to make that mistake. And uh, another thing is too, is that as you move up in the ranks, there's only one, it, it gets lonely. And there's only one way somebody gets that spot because there's no retirement plan. So that means that eventually, the guy that wants that spot below you. So that means everybody below you is politicking against you the whole time, trying to build a crew. They want your spot. And there's only one way they're going to get it. So there's and no that's comfortable either. spot in the organization. Right? There ain't no comfortable spot. None. Everybody you call brother really can't be your brother. You know, it's just it's just a vicious way to try to live life. You know? Can, can they do drugs? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's 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 a brotherhood of drugs. You know, there was uh back in the day in San Quentin, um Bobby Crane, New York, he uh he tried to put a moratorium on using drugs and that didn't really work out. You know, even though San Quentin was his and then blue and the Norris he had Folsom and it was divided like that. And uh Folsom was a complete drug program. We're going to do them. We're going to do them as much as we can, as fast as we can. And that's just that. And then <clears throat> New York tried to put that down in San Quentin because there was so much happening behind dope and he could see the writing on the wall and there's just too many drug addicts. It didn't work out. So nothing happened to him. That was, that was his thing, but he couldn't do it by himself. Yeah. You he know? couldn't like enforce it. Yeah, it's like Art Rufo and a couple of the other dudes that were there, heavyweights, heavy players back then. You know, they just put the squash on that because all they wanted to do was get high and kill people. Sounds like a great life, right? Oh, doesn't it, though? You know what I mean? And and, and it didn't, you know, I should have seen it. You know, I kicked myself in the ass for not seeing a long time ago that nobody's dying of old age. Everybody's getting whacked by a guy that's giving them a hug. And calling him brother, you know. So I feel lucky that it's fucked up that Ziggy come out doing what he did. It provided me an opportunity and a door to step back when it did. Otherwise, it would just, you know, it's blood in, blood out. It's all bad. You know, so I was able to step back. And, like I said, write these programs and whatnot. And I, I'm, I'm teamed up with a Ron Self on a veteran, healing veterans thing, doing some things for veterans. And I just teamed up with Chris Curtis on his uh, at-risk youth and Orange County, the dark side, so that he's part of it too. So that we're all three kind of working together. Yeah. To try to put a stop to this vicious circle and really get in there. Chris wants to stop them before they ever get to prison. And we need to do that. You know what I mean? He needs to, you know, that's, that quite needs to be part of it. Um, I want to keep them from coming back. I want to help them realize that, you know what, there's something more than all of this. And I wrote this book that's part of the program. It's all on my website. You know, you'll probably put it up there on yours and everything, star2023.org. And uh, Veterans Healing Veterans is doing things to the veterans. Because there's a lot of veterans in there that got out, came back from a war with PTSD, kept it to themselves. Next thing you know, they're on drugs, they're robbing connections, they're doing all these things that they wouldn't otherwise do. They're in prison and nobody knows about them anymore. You know, yeah, they're just locked away. They're just slammed and they're exposed to all this other stuff. And let me tell you, everything I just ran down to you. So you're a veteran, you got PTSD, you screwed up, you're in prison. And now you're watching all this stuff I just ran down unfold in front of you and stuff. What's that do for PTSD? I guess you got to add another letter onto it or something. I don't know because it must really, really be a trip. 
Yeah. Have you ever seen anyone getting brand tattoos? Yes. I, I and, mean, okay, so look, as soon as, and I didn't because I stepped back, but I could have got a rock, I, you know, and there were guys that were put on, uh, put on hold on that whole thing that they, and one of them went and got a rock right on his freaking throat, man. And, uh, he, you know, he even, you know, he got, everything was cleared for him. Boulder, everything was cleared for him eventually. Right. But he rolled the dice, but he was going to run with it. No matter what, he was going to die behind it. Cause it was him. He didn't care. He's never getting out. And on the other hand, I had a date, you know, and I had a lot of things that I didn't think about when I was starstruck and looking to get involved with all that. And it just gave me a good opportunity to step back and try to do something different. Yeah. And I know if somebody makes the choice to go that way right there, that's an option. That's their choice. You know, I'm, I'm not down talking those dudes because I'm going to tell you the truth. If it's not for those guys in California, okay, there would be other races and groups waiting for whites to go to store and all of that stuff to take their shit from them. And I, they wouldn't just take 20%. They'd take it all. Yeah. You know, they and they'd be leaning. Yeah. yeah. You get a visit from your old lady. Next thing you know, you get a visit from the mob. They're telling you, yeah, you're going to have your old lady do this. Or it's a wrap for you and her. So none of that happens to these guys because that white power structure is in place. And in place, it's just not for me. It is for some people, you know, and yeah. but it is a necessary evil. Yeah, it kind of polices their own, too. Yeah, and it makes it easier that a white guy can go to store now and not have to worry about other races taking everything he's got. Just know that when he gets back, he's kicking in. Or if he goes to the visiting room and he hits something, other races, he's taking it all or forcing him to do it. But just know when you get back, you're kicking in. And and you're not just and, and you're not going to do that and refuse to kick in and sell something on the yard because we're going to hear about it. And you don't have to worry about it like Bobby Ray. Okay, and this turned out to be a mistake, but... Um, Dan Christensen and Bobby Ray do went out to the in Folsom, went out to the visiting room. They had a South Sider watching him. So it was another race watching him. And uh, he was supposed to get something and bring it back. Well, it looked to the South Sider like he did get something. So when he got back, he had not got nothing, right? And he told him, I didn't get anything. And the South Sider had already told him, yeah, well, you know what? Uh, the dude did hit. So it all came down and, uh, Bobby Ray Shields and Christensen, they went to court for the center. They got told to go make an example out of him. So they went through his intestines. They cut him open, went through his intestines all the way to his sphincter. There was no dope. And they had beaten the case because they got, they, they came out of the cell. They didn't get caught there. And the sergeant told a cop to lie and say that he saw them coming out of the cell bloody. And then in trial, it came out that that was a lie. And they beat that case. Both of them actually out of prison right now. What? Yeah. <laughs> That's insane. Yeah. Manufactured evidence, you know? So, yeah. That's crazy. Now, yeah, it is. can you walk me through when you first met Barry Mills? Yeah. I. Uh, okay. So I knew what I had done and he knew I was coming to Atlanta and, uh, when I got there, he walked up and he told me who he was and he told me that I had done that for him and he had told me he appreciated it and he wanted me to walk with him. So I was kicking it with him and learning things he's in my head and he was already going to lace me up, you know. And so I got to be privileged of some conversations and some things. And that happened to be one of them. And I believe he wanted me to see that. He wanted me to see that go down with with John because he wanted me to see just how powerful everything really was, you know? So I was figuring it out. I was figuring out why would John do that? Well, you know what? He's a smart man. You know, he already knows his power structure. I mean, let's face it. The, the, the prison system is, is ran and owned by prison gangs. It's just the bottom line. And you get, you get some of these gangs on the streets that are just prison gangs. And they don't stand a chance against these families and stuff that are out there, you know. But guess what? They're not out there. They're in prison. And that's their yard. And they know it. And they're going to flex their muscles any way they want to. And, and a smart guy realizes that, yeah, well, you know. And I think at the end of the day, too, he might have harbored a little respect for the whole get down. 
the whole move that he didn't see it coming, that he didn't clarify, that he didn't put a stop to all that from the gate. You know, who can say what was in his mind? And you know? he want John Gotti wanted the guy who fought him killed, but they didn't yes, he did. kill him. Yeah. They right. they they whacked they him, but him? he didn't die. Yeah, they stabbed yeah. him, but he didn't die. Oh yeah, they stabbed everybody. But uh um that didn't matter, you know. It all depends on how it's put down. You don't need you to move on this dude for me. Okay, so we moved on him. And he's still in the hat. We're still gonna look for him, but you're paying for that. And then oh, by the way, that's every month. Yeah, they throw that in there. Yeah, a month later they come at him and he's just like <laughs> and you know, I happen to catch secondhand later that yeah, he took care of that. I mean, maybe he didn't, everybody's saying that, but I doubt it. He's a smart guy, you know, and you don't get to be who he is and where he was and what he did without being very intelligent. And the intelligent move was just to go ahead and she don't have to take care of nothing right now today. There's always tomorrow. There's next week. There's next year, but there is no tomorrow, next week, next year, if you're dead. So you do what you do to live. And who knows? Maybe he had plans down the line. Nobody knows what's going on in his head. I just know what happened then. You know. And I also think that there seems to be a lot of these monsters and guys that are dying of cancer in the feds. You kind of notice that. Yeah. You know, I don't want to get out on no tin foil trip, but you know, I'm mighty suspicious about the whole get down. Have you ran into a lot of mafia type people in in the feds? Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so at Leavenworth, uh, this old Sicilian guy came in, and uh, he uh, he's borrowing and borrowing, you know, and boom. His, the other guys don't really know about it, but he's got all this money coming, he says. And he shows me pictures and the old country and all that, and this serious shit was going down. And uh, <clears throat> kind of stepped back. It's not really my business, you know, I, but I'm giving him some things here and there and going to chow with him. And in the feds, when you go to chow, all the higher brass is lined up. You can talk to anybody from the warden on down. And this dude just kept on and kept on, and his money hadn't got there, hadn't cleared, and all of these excuses. Well, they hear this from drug addicts all the time. So they're thinking, this dude's a liar. Yeah. And I, somebody had went to the to the other Italians already. I, uh, on the way to chow one day, the trust officer, she calls him over and says, look, I have this check for you. It's so big, you got to sign it. Nobody else is going to sign it for you. So, can you come back over after chow and everything? Boom. So, yeah, that all goes down. And I'm like, fuck, I know these guys know. I know there's things going on. So, I go over to the uh, Italian tables. I got the California tables. I go over to the Italian tables, and there's there's this guy sitting there. His name is Joe. He's uh, got a couple books out about him called The Avenging Angel, The Unlikely Gangster, or whatever. And I tell him, hey, Joe, uh, when you're done here, can I see you at the California table? He goes, sure. So he comes over, he sits down, he tells me, so you know I'm the real deal. I said, well, that means there's two of us talking, man. I said, look, it ain't my business, but here's the deal. The old guy that has been getting stuff and all this has been going on, I just heard this. And I ran it all down to him. Well, right then the alarms go off. And he tells me, well, it's too late. And they just whacked him, right? He was telling the truth the whole time, but it just the the feds were not were delaying on getting him his money, and uh, yeah, he came up short because of it. But that's that's how it is. At that point, you know, I had a couple of them pulling me up, and I was walking with them, uh, John Fortinelli, a few other guys, and they were letting me sit in on some stuff. And he was telling me, you know, they're different little angle. Oh, yeah, we got a rope around this one. He's one of us. He's one of ours. And they were breaking stuff down to me on, on there. Cause you know, I was tripping that, you know, and it's with everybody really, but the conversation you hearing, you're hearing ain't what they're hearing. Yeah. There's these little things that you pick up in the conversation that put together a whole different thing. So they could sit there and, and, and talk about hitting you right in front of you and you don't even know it. You know, I'm, so I was picking up on all this and it was, you know, it's all a grooming thing. All Everybody's got their little grooming thing going on, you know, so. Now, all the mob guys stay, stay with the whites, right? Yeah, they stay, they stay because I mean, the reality is Italian is white. It's, 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 it's white. They're Europeans. They're uh, Mediterranean whites. Um, 
So, yeah, they stay with them. Italian is a nationality. That's your nation, right? Race is, uh, there's only three, you know, Caucasoid, Negroid, and Mongoloid. So they're part of the Caucasoid species, which is white. So they have to kick it with the whites. Now, what, what, what's the most dangerous group in, in the prison system? defense um they have you know they're they're dangerous in different ways like the brand will butcher you sick messed up and do bad things to you you know and they'll, and they'll do it for small stuff and you can usually tell who makes a hit like they would always say you could tell that a uh, a uh, 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 mexican south side or whatever made a hit because it'll be a small knife with 600 million holes i <laughs> can just go to work on you like a tattoo machine and then you can tell that a, a, a white guy made the hit because it'll be a big foot long knife all the way through the chest and out the back and the knife will still be there. You know, so they can look at different ways that people make their stuff and do their things, you know. And so it's hard to say because different tips are organized inside and out. Well, to me, you're organized inside and out. That's a power structure. Nobody can hide from you. And then you got tips that are just mainly inside, like the brand, and just straight up vicious because they don't care. You know, they just don't care. And uh, so it's just they, they all have their different strengths. Now, what's you know? the most most insane thing that you've seen in there? I've seen that 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 head get off in Terre Haute. <laughs> it was kind of crazy, man. I, I, uh, I watched them go. There was two. And uh, the cop, he was like, he was just trying so bad to, to, to save that dude. But he would tackle one, the other would get on him with box cutters and just get get to hacking. So the cop would tackle him. They got no guns in there. And the other one would get up and just get to hacking until they took it all the way off. And uh, there was a blood curdling scream right there coming over everything. I mean, that dude was just, at first he was screaming and then it was just a gurgle and then it was nothing at all.